In the big bill stack, we'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack, we'll fix your techie woes. Then we'll break things up, we'll make these till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we'll show you what to do. Now we'll hack it till we crack it, then we'll tell the world about it. And forget to tidy up, that's why it's now a bill stack. Hello and welcome to Bilge Tank 117. I don't know what Today we're, uh, we're talking about Arduino. Yay! Oh, we've dragged him in a bit. Paul and I, I Phil. I can't hide my chair back, but as long as everyone will forgive the uh, slight difference of chair. I think they will, Phil. We accept your difference. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, well, today, Arduino. Woo! Yeah, it's back. Yeah. It's back, it's called Arduino, and they've got shiny stickers on yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, no, literally. Cool. We're going to look through the Arduino range a bit, show a bit of example code on one of the newer boards, one of the Wi-Fi boards. Yep. And yeah, just generally kind of go, awesome. Nice. Right, where do we start? Um, <laughs> um, let's look at the Arduino Uno to begin with. Uh, yep. That's Leonardo. Which one was that? With Leonardo and Uno, they're kind of similar, right? Um, yeah. Leonardo is the evolution of Uno, Who knows that? Uno, Mega 328? Yes, at Mega 328P is the Uno, which is uh, like your, your basic, what is it, 16-bit mm -hmm. AVR or is it an 8-bit AVR? Mm. It's been a while since I've played the AVR yeah. chips, Let's actually. Let's call it 8-bit. So yeah, it's got 8 -bit. Battle Jack power, it's got USB... B. Big B. <laughs> USB B. Big B, 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 not B. little B. I notice it's evolved somewhat um, since either the original boards. It's looking much more like... Yeah, now it's got a nice, uh, shiny plastic uh, base on it, which yeah. is quite nice. So that prevents um, scratching on your desk from mm. the pins on the bottom. Maybe it's like and, shorting out. Yeah, shorting it on your metal laptop case or anything yeah. like that. So even though kind of Arduino is familiar to kind of most of the geeks and it's been around like forever it seems now, it's actually evolved and refined to kind of justify its price tag now. So probably a couple of years ago now they put the silk screen on the pins, yep. which is Extreme amazing. Nice. Can we get that on a bit of a close-up? Yeah. Extremely nice, actually. Extremely We're revealing nice. some of this project here, but we'll, we'll <laughs> guess that. In a bit. There we go. Look at that. So if you really want to know what the pins are, it's all there. It's handy. And Inside then, yeah. and out, actually, as well. Just this full injection molded little case as well for mounting and. Yeah, it's kind of removable mounting as well, which is cool, because you yeah. can kind of pop the board in and out and have that permanently installed. So if you do need to go into your, you know, nuclear reactor yeah. and replace the control board, yeah, which you'll use an Arduino for absolutely, just pull it off, put a new one in. Job is good. It just looks so much more finessed than the earlier versions of the Uno. Yeah, it's very nice. Cool. Nice indeed. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, they haven't they haven't got the Italian flag on there, which used to be the <laughs> the kind of test of how good the silk screen is. Oh no, there it is! Yay! Oh. I think it's how good is the silk screen is, kind of can you see Sicily and Sardinia? <laughs> and yeah, look at that, crisp as all heck. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's hard to get the silk screen through the plastic case now, but yeah, you can see the case even has a little bit of ventilation across the back there. Yeah. Not sure about that, but if they think they need it, then <laughs> must be yeah. helpful. That's your mounting so holes, your Leonardo holes, and Uno are your kind of old school mm -hmm. layout with the offset pins. In are we talking like ARM format and uh, AVR format? So the Leonardo is the ATX Mega uh, three two eight. Is it? Is it? Not. Which is basically the sim very similar indeed to the 80 Mega 328, except that it has a USB front end, end on it, so it can do USB. The 32U4. 32U4, that's the same the one. one. Yeah. So, what's it's the not difference? the 328 on the Uno. It's the 328 on the Uno, 32. It's, it's been oh. so long since I've played with Arduino stuff that I've forgotten everything, basically. Isn't, isn't that just kind terrible. of. Yeah, I forget what the difference is anymore. So I'm the, really the showing my ignorance here. 32U4 basically uh, does a USB serial natively, so you'll see on the uh, the 3 to 8 board you have this little chip here, which will be one of the what's the name again? The serial, the serial FTDI. FTDI, type yes, yeah, the infamous FTDI chips mm -hmm. with the the whole bricking incident. Whereas on here <laughs> you will see no such corresponding chip. 
So yep. you've got like matching chips here, here, and here, but there is no serial front end for this one because it's actually on on the chip itself on the AVR. And obviously, Leonardo's got the micro USB um, socket. Indeed. Yep. Whereas the Uno has the original anchor chain used on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of these connectors at all, mainly because it means I have to keep these cables around. Is that not a heat sink? I thought that was a big, a big heat sink on it. Yeah, yeah the, the seldom seen USB-B connector. So what you generally use these for is the Uno you would use for kind of simple embedded control projects, kind of reading sensors, maybe doing a bit of wireless stuff if you connect like a, an RF board over to it. It's kind of a little bit standalone. The Leonardo, which is actually the same chip that we built the uh, Pi K PCB around, is uh, much more interesting for interfacing with computers. So because it's got the direct connection to its USB port, you can do uh, USB HID, you can do USB MIDI, direct USB serial, and uh, various other things, which allow you to, for example, connect buttons to your Leonardo and turn it into a games controller that is then recognized as a games controller by your host computer. Mm -hmm. so Speaking this, of this which. Uh... Oh, what was this? <coughs> That's a nice segue into well, can't get open. Not reveal. Yeah, I'll be the official <laughs> opener while you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, broken the nail. We'll oh, broken the nail. Uh. And can we have some close-up there? No, that's just made it worse. Dope. Oh. There we go. Nice little close-up in the corner there. So I'll peel this back. Oh, he's got a nice little break there. Eh? Not enough yeah, to do Let's have a close look. Um, oh, yes, correct. That is a uh, mega. 16U2, I think. So this one that Paul's trying to get open is the Explorer. Yeah. Um, actually, Chris Burton on the chat is correct. This is not an FTDI chip anymore. This is a repurposed at Mega 16U2, I think. So <laughs> they yeah. have an at Mega chip just for converting the serial from USB to serial, and then they have a second chip uh -huh. to do the actual Whatever. work. Cool. So, it's a little redundant to me. This is basically a Leonardo, but with um, exactly what Phil was saying with game controls on it. Nice. So Ooh, you can right basically now. plug that straight into your... <laughs> oh dear. That's a bit how you're doing, isn't it? It's for Pong, I guess. Yeah, could be. <laughs> Old school oh, that's, Pong. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Slamming down your latest... So again, uh, yeah, that is the... Uh... Let's see if I can get close up right. I'm not wow. doing so badly on it, considering I'm woefully out of practice. It's got an analogue stick as well. Um, mm. has... Oh, that's a good cable. Ooh, orange cable. It's worth it for the bright yeah, uh, significant. You don't often see orange USB cables. Oh. Here we go. Arduino launch. Um, so I can get this. Uh, oh, there we go. Do you want to stick the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. get a knob. Cool. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love the slider, that's ridiculous. I can't, I can't... I wonder if could you, could you do VGA graphics with that? I think somebody could almost actually, certainly has. Um, probably at just ridiculous <laughs> low resolution. <laughs> so you probably could literally build a whole Pong console with that. So well, look at you should be able to get it to output a uh, kind of one pin RF signal as well and display on the TV. Yeah. Accelerometer, temp sensor, sensor, multiplexer, microphone, microphone. That's, yeah, that's pretty fully featured. Yeah, uh, RGB LED right over here. <laughs> so this is Light a very sensor. good kind of uh, do all the things starting the... board actually, isn't it? Get the web page up. Yep. Yeah, they've got a nice uh, schematic of um, all of the various bits. Cool. Um, so it's got Tinkerkit connections as well, which. Colour you see now and again. It goes away, it comes back. Yeah. So that's quite all singing, all dancing. Could I have a look at that, Phil? I just want to look at the chip while you open the next one. <laughs> what should we go for oh, next? The Dewey. Yeah, the Dewey. Mega yeah. 32U4. I think yeah. its official name's the Dewey Milanova. Is that right? No, no, no. Is that a different one? Is the Dewey Milanova was, right. was the very first, or was it the second? Okay. It's the very city. early on, yeah. Before it kind of became the Uno. So that was, yeah, the Arduino 2000, effectively. It's like the, uh, the old school. Yeah. It's kind of tie into the Fiat 500 thing. 
Are you having fun there? So oh, yeah. yeah, not so much. <laughs> we should have your go, you might as well just Hulk ripped the box to shreds. Oh, it's got Ooh, a uh, got plastic piece as well. Ooh. This is actually one of my favourite boards. So it's in a bit the more of a beast, Arduino doesn't it? Series because, yeah, it is a bit more of a beast. It has a much more capable chip on there. And this was one that I played with uh, doing VGA output on and actually created a little adapter with a VGA connector and some wires, following someone else's guide, actually, to be honest. Uh, that would allow this to be connected up via VGA to a monitor and then display pretty decent pictures actually. I can't remember what size colour palette it was, but yeah. it was it was fairly decent. <clears throat> so this is uh, on Cortex M3. He says reading the pages. <laughs> <laughs> but the GUA was kind of one of their first forays into ARM. It, it's a nice board. I mean, yeah. it, it sticks with the standard. I mean, it's got the same layout. Kind of uh, as a subset of the header, so that you can still use shields on there. But then it expands out with this Wait a minute. Uh, massive extra expansion header and all the additional pins. Okay, when did that happen? When did what happen? The pins are aligned. They've got rid of the pin offset. <gasps> the famous Arduino pin offset is gone. What, what, Every what? shield is now broken. No, surely not. <laughs> yeah. Surely not. I'm going to look into that. Oh, so surely not. <laughs> um, anyway, so the DUA with its aligned pins. <laughs> the DUA with its... No, now I'm just very confused and uh, we've got dead air while I stare dumbfoundedly <laughs> at these two ideas. Hold on another thing, just to show. <laughs> so it's got something ridiculous like 52... It is something GPO like that. Oh no, it was, the, it was the offset the other way, wasn't it? That's, um, so that's if you have like serious... Um, if you're doing a serious project, that one. But I found it to be a kind of a much roomier board for doing stuff like uh, graphics output and things. And I was doing a little tile-based shading game engine for it, where you basically uh, built a level out of tiles, and then each tile was hand off to a function that just shaded that <coughs> tile with a uh, kind of light and, and shadow and a, a ledge and a backdrop and stuff. And it was uh, quite a fun little chip to work with for that sort of thing. Uh, I think, uh, in retrospect, it's massively overkill because what they're doing now with the... What's the little handheld? Archie Boy? Archie Boy, that's the one. I should have thought it would have Archie somewhere in the name. But yeah, what what people have done with the Archie Boy is, is phenomenal in terms of uh, graphics and shiny yeah. things compared to what I was achieving on this much, much more capable chip. It's so tiny as well, it's, like, it's just ridiculously small. It's literally the size of a credit card, doesn't it? <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Or smaller, in fact. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that was more kind of the the old offset one with the break in the pins. Yeah. Yeah. They've uh, just got these lovely molded headers where you can see that slight additional break. If you look very closely, it's still you there. You can see it's, it's like still one and a half pins worth of break. It's just all molded into the header now, which yeah. is really nice actually. So the same on the Uno as well then. And I guess yeah, it means the whole yeah. the whole set of pins can be printed in one shot and yeah. also uh, inserted. Yeah. So, in the so, so the old shields will work, but. Yeah, custom so, part. Yeah. Okay. For a minute there, I thought they fixed the glitch. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it just makes manufacturing easier. Yeah, well, if they're making enough, you know, it's kind of sensible. I don't like the, uh, the kind of classic computer off-colour beige pins on this. Yeah. So this yeah. follows the Mega layout. Do we have the Mega there as we well? We don't have the Mega. I don't think they're going to stock yet. Okay. We're we'll just waiting for the Mega. What's that one? That's a, That's a proto board. Shield. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think if I remember correctly, I think they're... Oh, it just looked like I'm just staring off into the distance. Coming soon. Um, yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, no it's there. Oh, I must just anyway, it looks it. like that, but black yeah. headers, right? Oh, yeah. The evil has been built into the plastic. Yeah, the Mega's very similar to the... Um, 54 IO pins. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And so big USB as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of like... suppose they still have that yeah. big USB, small USB differentiation, but I guess it's between devices that have usable USB slave capability versus yep. devices that don't really it's a it's a point of differentiation I suppose. Yes. So this segues onto the boards where they have fixed the pinout, which is the new MKR <laughs> age, which is hopefully where kind of Arduino is going now. Yep. Um well we talk about the micro first because it's kind of okay. like the at the other end of the spectrum there's the Arduino Micro which is the smallest one I think. Uh, it's kind of the Nano as well, but it kind of gets a bit shaky about who makes it, right? Well, we're getting the Nano as well. It's coming. Um, yeah. 
coming soon, but I'm sure it... But it's more often that kind of Adafruit were making it or Spark from were making equivalents yeah, rather think, than it being the first party one. I think the Micro is actually smaller than the Nano kind of like, it's not, it's not as you would imagine. But, um, no, I'm totally confused with the potentially uh, <laughs> Adafruit one. Other, it's, it's the smallest one in the family. Yeah, it's de it definitely says it's the smallest one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really tiny. Are these effectively um, legitimising the Teensy and Teensy Pro? Or, no, not Teensy, sorry. The Nano and Micro. Get it it's, it's, it's all so very confusing now. So that's also that Mega 32 U4 as well. Which is actually pretty handy in this form factor because this is something you can quite readily build into enclosure. You can hook a bunch of arcade buttons to and you can build your own arcade controller yeah. straight off the bat. Or you can... Yeah, you can do nefarious things with, uh, <laughs> with USB head. Hide it down the back of someone's computer. Like stick it in the back of someone's computer type. and have it randomly press keys every now and again. If you want to prank someone. Uh, not that we're uh, advocating that. Advocating that yeah, at all. Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's good if you want something that's really tiny that you want to build into like a, a Game Boy or something like that. Um, it is uh, incredibly refined and yet they still have all the things. Yep. Plenty of pins to use for things and buttons and LEDs. And We're sounding so very expert on this episode, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. All the ums and ahs, and we have no idea what this stuff is anymore because well, we, we deal with so much. So out of the Arduino ecosystem. This, system, is, the, so this is the newest This um, is cool, this one. Edition. Yeah. I like the fact they've got these extended long pins on the back. Yep. So you can stack there's them. A, yeah, what, so, what is this? Really serious. It's kind of similar to Adafruit Feather, um, in that you can have shields for it as well, um, with the pins on the bottom and the top. In fact, we have um, yeah. this. Um, oh, probably gonna need. Um, so this is the the Maker SD Proto Shield. Guessing um, that unlabeled header there is FBI. Uh, Titanium teeth. <laughs> Very useful. Jaws. <laughs> yeah, so do you want to stack that on it? Okay. So this is that so proto shield. Um, oh, with, with, SD cards with an SD well, card. Get it under the camera. Mm. Um, and I think that's because the the one that we're going to talk about next, the Maker One Thousand, um, has the Wi-Fi on it, but no SD card slot. So. Yep. You can use that with the Maker 1000 to add the, uh, the, the SD card slot. Cool. Um, Ta da. There we go. Is that as far as it goes? That, I think. <laughs> it's as far as it's going. Um, it's a bold choice. So, that one that Phil's got is the Maker Zero. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing the extended pins could actually go through another board with a kind of a surface mount header. And give you basically Arduino shims. So that's a Cort Cortex M0, that one. Um, so I guess you can probably run MicroPython on that as well. I imagine there will be a version already available for it. Or yeah. That. So that's got the LiPo um, connector as well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Have we got what's any the Maker one on the Fox side? in? Asked Tom. What's Maker Fox? So, a bit like the Feather, these have the range where they have different radios. Ah, so you've got oh, so the Zero Sigfox with no radio. The Maker Zero. Yep, so the Sigfox, and there's also one with Wi Fi, which is what we're going to do the demo on, and there's one with LoRa coming as well, uh, which will be interesting. This is uh, basically Arduino having looked at what everyone else has been doing while they were uh, occupying themselves with suing themselves. They've, they've kind of come <laughs> back and integrated themselves with the ecosystem for this is working, this is working, this is cool, well, let's do our own... They've been working on this for a while. This. So this has been hanging around for a while, it's just taken us a while to kind of sort out the contractual legal stuff <laughs> and get to the place where it's all happy and we're kind of saying, yay, Arduino's back together and has a happy face on. Uh -huh, it's good stuff, there's always room <clears> for, for more ecosystems, yeah. more ways to do stuff. What's that little connector on the other side, Phil? Yeah. Which one? That, that one. That there. little one, that is... I don't know. You're not have to sure look it that. has. It's not, it's not on there, is it? We don't mention it on the page either. We'll have to look into that. There's no Ooh, radio on here. Interesting. So is it, it on the back side? Could be... Wait, no, it's not enough. No. Wait, hold on. No. I'm Ooh. trying to count the pins. So there's only five, so it can't be SPI. Or could it? Mm. It does I squared S audio, that one as well. So oh. it's good if you want to 
make like some kind of like sound making thing. That could be your audio um, connection then. I guess you could probably build like a synth with it and stuff like your, that. Your power, your ground, your clock, your frame sync and your uh, data out. Yep. But yeah, no Sigfox yet. Hopefully it'll come at some point, but at the moment it's a little bit patchy in the UK. It's getting a lot better. I think France has the best coverage still. Uh, we'd like to get the LoRa one in, because we have our first Things Network gateway. Yay. Which I'm going to be testing with a few of the boards that we have, like the PyCom, the LoRa one from Arduino when it comes in, the MKR LoRa, and the Feather. I think those are a rather lot more. Well, I suppose it depends what you've got access to, but I think the LoRa stuff is rather a lot more useful in the the short run than the Sigfox. But I do like the concept of Sigfox. Yep. Because it, I mean, any development board with Sigfox chip in it, it falls underneath their their, their developer licensing, doesn't it? Underneath their prototyping licensing, which means you basically just get access to tinker with it for free. Yeah. Which is nice. But I think the, the kind of data charges are not so high as well compared to no, GSM they're, they're nodes. Fairly, fairly decent. But then the coverage is bad and it's hard to set up your own node, whereas kind of uh, Things Network, LoRa, is kind of getting cheaper you to set up your own fix node. fix coverage problems yourself, can't you? Yeah. I think Ryan's been having a way of the time setting up his own lawn. <laughs> yeah, he like covers Norwich now. <laughs> He just puts it on his roof and that's it, Norwich is... I think he's had like a range of like 120 miles, I think, with it. Has he? I think really? he said that, yeah, I'm pretty sure he said... Right. Yeah. 120 yeah. miles? Yeah, I think he was complaining about only getting 50 metres last time I looked, so we should probably catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he said that. I could be wrong. Um, we just need to get ourselves... Uh, he's probably not watching, he doesn't watch Bill Street. Put it so. on top of the Empire yeah. State Building. Yeah. Then we've got a big tower out there, and somebody who knows how to get stuff installed on top of it. So St Paul's Tower could be a good location. Maybe it was 12 miles. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 120 <laughs> seems excessive. <laughs> Although it is explicitly called long range, so... Yeah. So... Anything could happen. Right, let's have a look at... There's things everywhere. Now. We've got the starter kits us here as well, which if you've never heard of Arduino or wondering where to start, they have these very shiny kits. We can open this one because it's very yeah, premium. Stuff. So the starter kit has a good booklet, a good set of components, and... Uh, I think it usually has wooden bits to put them on. So that's the very Uno, comprehensive. That's the Uno one, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and is that, that the one that has the the paper craft stuff in, or am I confusing it? Yeah, it's about? probably something else. Oh, wow, it's so weighty. Yeah. yeah. And it's got loads of projects as well. It's got a, a book in it to, Easy to you know, tell you how to build all the projects. And it's got LEDs and motors and all kinds of components. Design the control panel for your Starship. Sensors mm -hmm. and all sorts. And this one's the MKR, the newer boards. Yep, so this is the last one that we're going to look at. Um, the but this is, bundle? Yeah, this is a kit with... Um, let's have a look, it's got the Maker 1000 board, it's got USB cable, breadboards, uh, battery connector, jumper wires, photoresistor, potentiometers, buttons, temperature sensor, tilt sensor. Just a bunch of stuff. LCD don't, screen. Don't read it all out. LEDs, motors, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's got a bunch of stuff in it, um, so that's Bash. that's kind of ideal if you want to get started with kind of like IoT type things. And yep. Tank, it's a good way for a beginner to get going, I think. Has got any booklet a few there? Um, bits that you know will work with it. There's a small, hey. small little booklet. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't look very comprehensive like normal. Yeah. No, you just um, have to read it with a magnifying glass. I did find that on um, hackster.io... Um, there is a load of projects for the Maker 1000 board already. Cool. Um, so the 1000, is that the Wi-Fi one? That's the Wi-Fi one. That's the one right. that's in this kit. And the yep, IoT the one kit. that's sitting in front of me now. Um, products. Maker 1000, there we go. Um, oh, Pop-ups. Um, ruining my flat lane. Ah. Yeah, so you can see there's loads of... Tutorials there for um, uh, lots of lots of Alexa ones actually, which are pretty cool. Cool. Um, yeah, Axe so is yeah. doing pretty good at this stuff. Yeah, nine pages of uh, tutorials for that. So yeah, I lots of stuff set. to get your teeth I into. We'll, we'll be doing stuff of our own as well, our own guides and tutorials based around the yeah, uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So let's look at what you've actually done. Um, yeah. So. Um, just, just this morning I was playing with um, 
This is the Maker 1000 that's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it. Um, and we've connected up one of our BME 680 um, breakouts. Okay. Um, so that's kind of an environmental sensor that does air quality, temperature, pressure and humidity. Well, this is um, ideally the sort of thing you want to be connecting to a Wi-Fi or a long-range network because it means you can then distribute these sensors yep. all over in different place. rooms in your house and <laughs> whatnot. Everywhere. Um, so what I have done is I have set up a, a REST API um, that you can query for the different um, parameters. Oh, okay. Um, right, shall we have a look through the code? Yeah, um, let's look at the code. Cool. Um, grab data so while I breathe on it. I was down there. This is a slightly make... refined BME 680 breakout here, here as well. Um, yeah, yes. so let's look at... Um, this is using a really old Arduino version, you should probably get something newer. <laughs> so this is kind of cobbled together from um, vintage Arduino. Various bits of code. The REST API is a thing called AREST, um, which is like an Arduino RESTful REST. um, API. Oh um, and it's really nice for kind of building really quick um, Arduino APIs with um, things like the ESP8266. Yep. And then things like that. Mm -hmm. How does um, the web facing stuff on this chip work then? Because on the, what was it, the Yun? It had a full Linux stack that you hooked into to basically handle the web side of things. And then you had the microcontroller that you did, you deployed your code to. I'm guessing this is rather more integrated and, and not unlike the uh, ESP8266 style of uh, programming. Yeah, where your web know. stack is actually running directly on it. Yeah, it probably is running on the thing um, itself. Um, yep. Yeah, so it's coupled together from that and the Adafruit BME 680 Arduino library. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, so it's just kind of, um, let's get to the kind of meat of it. Um, it's kind of exposing three different variables for temperature, pressure, and humidity. Um, mm, I'm, not I'm not doing right? gas because it's, it's a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. A bit fiddly that one. Um, okay, um, I know you've set the variables to numbers there. Should you normally get those from the sensors rather than just kind of saying the temperature is twenty one? They're just kind of default initial yeah. values. Um, so, but that doesn't set the temperature of the world. No. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Creaky so your rim can be above or below twenty one degrees. But it gives us a sensible default. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then there's just like a, a loop that runs constantly that's um, well you've got all the gubbins to kind of connect to the Wi-Fi um, to begin with um, and then setting up the um, parameters for the BME 680 Cool. Um, and then like I say um, a loop that runs constantly and kind of just pulls the, the BME 680 for the uh. For the different so readers. effectively um, the API exposes those variables to yep. the uh, internet by REST API. Well, I thought this camera setup makes it look like we're actually looking at the code. <laughs> it's just, yeah, like that, there we go, I'm watching the code go by. Um, this API is really nice because you can do other stuff like there. toggle pins and um, set pins as, up as inputs and outputs mm -hmm. and stuff like that directly from the, uh, from the web. A bit like uh, kind of Johnny Five or some of those APIs, which, uh, yep. which is super cool, actually. Um, so let's have a look at. Um, so if I just. This is set to query the humidity at the moment, so if I just refresh them. 31.29. Breathe on it, Phil. Breathe. breathe. On it. <gasps> oh, whoa. Your breath is humid, Phil. You've been having coffee. <laughs> Let's watch that go. Of course, nobody at home can actually... Oh, no, it's on there. It's fine. Everybody can see it. <laughs> Panic over. There we go. Yeah, so that's quite cool. Um, so then we can also do... It's probably quite warm now as well, so let's look at the temperature. Yeah, hey, 32 oh, degrees. Put my finger on it and you can watch it go colder. <laughs> I was going to say waft it to make it go colder. My cold, dead hands will chill it down. <laughs> Actually, they're not. Waft they're surprisingly waft. warm today. Waft and wafting. Yeah, there it goes. It's gone down yet. Yeah. There we go. So that's uh, that's cool. Cool. And then 
pressured as well, just to prove that. Which I can works. actually physically press down on the sensor in order to change. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Are you going to refresh it? Oh. Uh, end yeah. up with a BME 680 dent in my Oh, well, it's gone up. Mm. Yes. Up oh, and down again. Cool. Yeah, I think constantly blowing on it should make it. Can you do a long exhale over it? <laughs> or suck, suck, like a child. Suck up and go, yeah. And heal. Mm. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh I think <laughs> Make I... it rain, Phil. Make it rain. <coughs> Science. Oh, dear. Right, you ready? Oh, go again. Go again. Rain. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> If I'd had more time, we would have had oh, this. Like, go. I would have had this slight like, oh. streaming data to graph. Oh my goodness! Oh, dear. <laughs> I think you've broken it, Phil. Well done. Oh, he's just not responding now. <laughs> he's actually inhaled the sensor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's yeah, it's ideal if you want to like <laughs> um, stick one in your shed with a lipo battery or don't do that. Yeah. A solar panel or something like that. As far as we can tell, our LiPo battery is the JSTPH connector, is the right clarity for these as well. Yep. Mm. But the Spark One hybrid hydro cable is not. That's, That's the wrong way yeah. around for some reason, which yeah. we discovered with kind of slight burny smells. <laughs> yeah. So, the LiPo battery is good, reverse. hydro cable not so much. Yeah, we have broken the LiPo charge uh, circuitry on that. Oops. Mm. Eek. But it's fine. It's so it, fine. It has on board LiPo charge circuitry, is that what you're saying? That's mm -hmm. actually quite neat. Yeah, yeah, so you can have it plugged into USB and charge the LiPo at the yeah. same time. These handy extended prongs give you something to kind of push the LiPo onto to keep it secure as well. As well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be yet. fair, it, it could well be that they've chosen that it's extended site so you can pack, pack a battery in between your layers. Who knows? Yeah. You sucked the could... life out of it, Phil. Damn your eyes. What have I done? Do I, do I need to reboot it? Try <laughs> probably. It. Try it. be interested to see if it comes back. I could probably have just request the reset button. <clears throat> it's possible I shorted it out or something. Or Otherwise confused it. I've consumed it so. Pressure is over 9,000. <laughs> Always thinking about it. Anyway, yeah. That about covers it. From there you can make any projects using... Oh, with the yeah, back. Let's, let's try this again of... with a ultimate low pressure. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that doesn't feel like much of a change. So yeah. you, can, you can suck 50... God, I, I want to go this. I want to see which of us sucks the most. <laughs> 50 HPA. Go on, bring, bring the power cables oh, over. I don't think Nothing this is possibly go capable wrong. of moving. I'm going to have to lean over. You need, come, to, you need come to come closer. Lift up the back, Phil. It's, it's, it's literally welded to the desk. Hold on. <laughs> Let's plug Fine. it in over. Okay. Okay, here we go. You're going to have to. You need to get a good, hard, kind of sucking <laughs> chamber. And then here you need go. to You're refreshing. the air from it. Let's go to baseline. Okay. 1009. Okay, 1009. go. Oh, oh, dang. dang. You suck hard. <laughs> you suck hard, Paul. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to attempt it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that suck already. So. Okay. I'm not yeah. going to get in balloons either. So. It's just a. <gasps> yeah, I'm making all kinds of bad things happen there. Oh my god. Yeah. Someone just got a Bill Shank bingo. Yeah. So we'll go back to there and just say, well, there we go. That is. And it's Arduino reintroduced in fine style. Hurrah! Yeah. It's Welcome the newest, back. the shiniest baseline for um, boards as was back in the day. And good to see them back and on the right track and yeah. everything simple and just getting on yeah, with the I tech. Think the uh, Maker Series, series is a uh, very shiny, very interesting. Yeah. It could be the. Yeah. yeah, if you want something that's just like robust and solid and kind of like ideal for These kind are of like small, robust small and better they? projects. Yeah, I mean, you can just like. Plug and unplug them constantly, <laughs> and they just like almost a challenge to kill three yeah, two eight. Never, never break. Cool. Right. Yep. We'll see you next week. Indeed. Where I think I'll be away. Tanya will be away. So it's like I won't be away. You two are kind of left on the bat doing something. Hmm. You'll have to think of something to do. Do we have more microbit boards by then? 
Ooh, but we should, we should have something we to do. show off, yeah. 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 That'd be good. Some more, more block-driven, fantastic fun times. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Right, see you next week, mm. folks. Bye-bye. Mm. Well, I'll be in, yeah. like, San Francisco. Bon voyage. Oh. Maybe we can we can get you live on the show from San Francisco and check out. It's never gone well because every time we make fair happens, just everything goes to pot. <laughs> the All Wi-Fi, the, network the cellular network, five hundred mile radius is just yeah. dead. You know, having a hundred thousand plus people using the same network is just apparently it's bad like that, times. Like that Apple keynote where they were, was it the first iPhone one where they mm. tried to d- demo it? Or <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what it was, and it just all failed terribly because everyone was on the Wi-Fi. And like, please, everyone, Steve Jobs was like. Yeah, turn off your phones. Yeah. I'm trying to demo the future here. <laughs> Which he was right, but... Yeah. yeah. Wild, 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 wild. Pure Steve. Yep. Yeah. Right, bye. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.